Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am so excited that um, my beam order came in. So I thought I would unwrap it and we would do a swatching video, but a little something different than usual because I'm getting tired of doing the regular swatches. So I decided to put some um, pages in this journal that I drew um, that were kind of a little variation on swatches just so we could do some fun things and have something unique to look at. So Beam is a paint company out of Canada and I found out about them. I'm not really sure how actually. I can't remember when I first discovered them, but I'm really glad that I did because I am so impressed with the way that um, the creator of Beam comes up with these amazing new paint colors. Um, originally, I got this palette from her and she sent me these beautiful colors to try out. And I was so impressed with them that I actually put in an order myself. And um, I also want to say that we did two giveaways on the Facebook page and she sent two amazing gifts worth like a hundred dollars each to the people that won the giveaway. So I so much appreciate that. And I think that that really just shows the generosity of the, um, the company, you know, and, and I love, I just love everything about the paints. I mean, they're not only beautifully made, but they're really incredibly wrapped and trying to be like sustainable, you know, things that are like repurposing palettes and creating this. This is amazing, right? This is a piece of wood that is repurposed and they have smaller ones too. And then the paints are gorgeous too. So it says, thank you for supporting indigenous family business. The paints you have just purchased are made with local Manitoulin honey, wild crafted tree sap, hand gathered, washed and sifted Manitoulin stone and the finest light fast pigments. We strive to be a plastic free company and we make all of our packaging either hand cut and sanded reclaimed white cedar or birch or wrappers hand printed in shop with plant based inks and waxed with local beeswax, which is actually this. It's pretty incredible. <laughs> Um, and then there's a discount code and everything, but go to beampaints.com and they're in Canada. They ship anywhere. I believe, I mean, we've had the winners, uh, ship paints in England. I'm in Canada, of course, in the U S as well. So I'm pretty sure they ship anywhere, but you know, the thing I noticed about the paints is that makes them unique from anything else that I have are the colors. The, the color range is truly unique. To anything that I have seen. And that's why I ordered more paint because I really wanted to fill this palette, especially this color that I've never seen anything like it. It's called strawberry red. And I have to tell you, it is not like any other color that I have. I mean, it's not quite pyral red. It's not quite a blue red. It's really incredible. And the strangest thing is every single time I get out the beam paints, my husky comes over and just invades my territory. It's like, I don't know what she smells in these, but she definitely wants them. <laughs> it could be the honey. It looks like it's orange shirt day as well. Cause I got a little sample here of something called pumpkin, which is going to be exciting. I wonder if I own pumpkin. I might. Yeah, I do. I do have pumpkin. That's pretty cool. All the colors I did notice, um, from this company too. It seems like they don't make a color if they can't make it light fast. So that is really great because lately I feel like we just keep running into um, companies that are saying their paints are light fast and then their paints don't end up being light fast. And that kind of bums me out via Daniel Smith, who I have a lot of their paint and I've invested a lot of money in their paints, but you know, in individual testings, um, obviously they are not entirely light fast like they should be. And that really kind of irritates me a little bit because I've made a lot of really great art with them. And now I have to worry about if I don't just do it in prints, you know, so I'm putting a drop of water on each of these. So you can see how well 
they um, reignite. And that's a big thing when it comes to paint. There she is. You see, the minute I get the bean paints out, all of a sudden it becomes husky hour. <laughs> She's in that. Okay, so I had to stop for just a second because I wanted to try and figure out where I was going to put these on my sheet here and what colors might go kind of good together. Have a little sip of coffee. This is really cute. It's neat. It's like waterproof. This is really interesting. I guess this is like painted with beeswax. It's very, very cool. This is such a really, truly cool um, brand. I've, I'm intrigued by it every time I get to paint with these. Okay, so one of the reasons why I've been doing these is, like I said before, is, you know, regular swatching has been boring, but I feel like it just gets me even more creative. You know what I mean? And I really like that. I think it's just, it feels good. So let's start with some of these colors here and I'm going to start with flower violet, which is over here. Oh, it's really pretty. So let's see what we can do as far as getting like the mass tone over on uh, this area here. And then seeing how it blends out with water. And don't forget, if you hear my husky, she is a spitfire that is misty. Okay, let's rinse my brush out. Okay, so here we go. We're going to add water. Oh, this is so pretty. So flower violet, what a gorgeous color. I'm excited also to see how these try. I'm going to try and not cover the color because I want to be able to reference it, but I want like a mass tone at the bottom and then like a mid tone. Let's try that. I did, you know, thinking back about what I was really impressed about with these paints before was the way that they what, the way the color goes down, it's really beautiful. Like they're so highly pigmented. And I think I mentioned this before. I noticed that she doesn't make any colors that aren't worth making. You know, it's not about like the line of colors doesn't seem like it's as much about making every color, you know, and running a really, really huge company, uh, just making mass producing colors. I feel like these colors are really purposeful and such a, such a joy and such a splurge, you know, they're very, very special. And, uh, I do kind of notice a huge difference when I paint with the colors, you know, this is sunrise red and it goes to like a really, really beautiful pink tone. Oh my God. It's so pretty. Let's add a little more to the bottom to see how how dark it can get. This is so pretty. What a beautiful color. Let me see if I'm close enough for you guys to see. There you go. So there's not that much glare. That's beautiful. Okay. The next one is spring lilac. There are some uh, of these beautiful pastel shades in this set that are just lovely. Spring Lilac. Oh my gosh. This is, uh, I really don't have anything like these, you know, and that's been like a real joy about experimenting with new paints.
this one has a um, a beautiful like you could still do really transparent projects with this in the light color but it definitely has an opaque quality to it but I just love them they're so pretty and like I said I, I don't have anything like this I would have to mix um, colors to try and get this look at how pretty that is spring lilac sky color is one of the new ones I just brought in I've been dying to try this one I wanted a really beautiful light blue that I didn't have oh yeah this is so pretty I'm gonna be doing some uh, projects with transparent layers and uh, lots of landscapes and so it's gonna be exciting kind of trying these colors because they're so different so I don't really need to reload my brush much at all I'm just trying to get as close to mass tone at the bottoms here as I can and then just gonna take just color just uh, water and then try to peel it back a little bit just to see if we have any granulation or you know what's going on with the lighter shades in these isn't this so much more fun than just the regular swatching I think this is so much nicer okay that was on a curve so let me show you see how pretty that is how beautiful the color is it's gorgeous oh my goodness so far so good I love these colors I can't wait to mix them together this is gonna be fun hopefully I'm close enough um, if you want to know what brush I'm using this is the Escoda versatile size 8 travel brush that I got from Jackson's I will leave a link below if you would mind um, using my affiliate link that would be so cool because I use the affiliate income um, to sponsor the giveaways for this channel okay this next one is butter and I saw this listed on our website apparently it's a gouache and I really really love it I think it looks so pretty I was dying to try it and I thought it was just perfect for these pastels um, I didn't really want to mix my own for this set I wanted to kind of have some really rich colors and then also some really beautiful pastels since she had sent me uh, you know some lovely ones oh my gosh butter is gorgeous now it's listed as a gouache I wonder if the pa other pastels are listed as a gouache because if I were going to call this one a gouache I kind of feel like I almost had to call the other ones a gouache too just based on um, my experience with them however I can say that the spring lilac and the sky color although it kind of seems like they would be listed as a gouache they're not they're very transparent you can do some layers with them and actually um, along the way here I will grab another sketchbook and we'll do some layers with some things let's put pumpkin is the next one oops beautiful rich pumpkin perfect timing too huh this is very creamy it goes down so easily let's add a little water this is beautiful these are called paint stones um, these adorable little things that are wrapped in the beeswax canvas and you know surprisingly as much as these are mixed with honey they really do dry well enough and quickly enough to take with you so you could literally just pop these back in the little beeswax um, thing and take them with you and you don't really have to worry about them getting that messy 
because I find that they dry pretty quickly. Look at that pumpkin. It's beautiful. It's so pretty. Okay, spring green is next. They're all such pretty colors. This one has, um, it's almost like May green. It reminds me a little bit. It like has this beautiful bright green, but then there's this yellow under it. So if I rinse out my brush, yep, I can get that beautiful yellow to come out. That will make an incredible transparent layer. All right, we have to stop for a second and do um, see how this one does in a transparent layer because that's just gorgeous. So if you don't mind, let's get the other sketchbook out. Look at how pretty that is. It's beautiful. So pretty. Um, oh, no, I don't have any. I'm looking to see if I have any paper here. I have a sketchbook though. Hang on a second. Okay, I just grabbed some blocking fur because I want to do this with some of these colors. So if you've ever seen transparent flowers, these I feel like are excellent watercolors to do that with. So I'm just going to take, like imagine there'd be a box there, a square. I'm going to draw a transparent shape and then take some of it and get a little bit darker at the bottom. Yeah, these do. They just do a lovely job. I'm just going to kind of back out a little bit of the color and let it reside down there at the bottom. Take a little more. This is one of those colors that does this so well, you know? So let's just do a very, very light transparent layer. And I'm going to do another one here. Beautiful. So we got to let these dry, um, of course. But yeah, it does. It does a great job with these. It's really, really beautiful. And they dry pretty, pretty quickly, actually. I think I actually need to let this dry a little bit more because otherwise they're just going to blend, but it's great for transparent layers. Okay. I'm definitely going to have to play with this even more because these do transparent layers so well, and I'm not even finished. This has to dry and more layers have to go on, but they do transparent layers for sure. That's exciting. Can't wait to do that. Okay, so let's continue on. I have Robin's egg. Such a beautiful color as well. This one has definitely these pastels have an opaque side to them. 
as you can see. But then if you rinse rinse out and then you let the the color carry on in the water, there is a semi-transparent quality to them. The colors are just stunning. They're so pretty. And they're so creamy. Fun to paint with, you know? Definitely getting quality paint. So they don't disappoint at all. I really like that. It's nice. Okay, I'm going to lift. I can lift this one back. It's good. It's really beautiful. <laughs> These colors are stunning. Okay, let's go um, down to, let's see, where am I going to go? Blueberry Mountain is right there. Another really pretty color. I remember looking um, at these colors online and they're, they're really hard to choose from because there's not a lot of them in the collection every year, but they're really beautiful, right? So like they kind of make you want to just paint with what's available. And so far, I have noticed that everything is got a really high pigment strength. So I'm liking that. The colors are just really different than what I have. And I have so much. I have Sennelier. I have Schmincke. These colors don't run away with you. Like uh, Core, of course. They don't. You know, they're not explosive. So I would think that any skill level can paint with them pretty easily. Let's try the gold. Oh, yeah. I remember when this gold first came in, I was like, what? It's a beautiful gold. It dances around the water, which is really cool. And you can also paint this gold over the other colors. So I probably will do in here. And it has a sheer side to it where you can make like a sheer gold. But it does dance. I believe there are some other metallics too by Beam. I'll have to maybe explore those with her next because those are really pretty and they'll be fun for like the holidays um cherry is one of my favorite colors i like cherry a lot you can see why get you to have a little better view of cherry yeah it's really pretty color I like the mass tone in it and I really like the light sheer of it. I'll bet cherry is going to be another one that you can do the sheer layers with. Let me just, <laughs> can't help myself. Let's just paint. Oh, for sure. Look at that. They're beautiful. Can you see that? See how beautiful the layers are? I always love to look at paints to see, you know, 
what you can do with them. This is such a pretty color for sheer florals. I'm going to leave that little bit there because I actually like the centers to kind of connect and be a little more dramatic. And it's developing a pretty nice edge. Look at that. So beautiful. Really pretty. Okay, I'm going to let that dry. I just knew when I saw these, these were going to make terrific transparent flowers. Look at how pretty they are. Okay, so the next one is Morning Peach. This is a really pretty color. It's very delicate and also will make some very interesting layers as well. Now for something that has got like a lot of like an opaque quality to it, let's just back out a little bit and test it out with opaque layers and see. Oh yeah, handles it no problem. So it's transparent enough where it doesn't lose its beautiful color and you can get some different tones in the transparency. This is such a great way to test out um, if a color is opaque but still transparent enough to do something like this. I think it does a great job. I love it. I actually love the fact that it's got this quality that I can do, you know? Like I can do like different tones with it. So just because I know this is just the first layer though, I'm not going to get crazy. I'm just going to take out, make it as transparent as I can. Because I know I have to do more layers, but that's beautiful. Well done. Uh, PB29. I don't know what this one is called for some reason. It's like cut off. I'll have to look at the website. But wait till you see the strength of this color. Look at that. This is going to be a really nice mixing color. I love the tone of this one. PB29, you know, as you know, it can take on various tonal qualities and some can be more granulating than others. Typically they're all granulating. But this one's highly granulating and it's lovely. It's very easy to blend. So I had created a line there um, just to see if I could just kind of go over it with water and it did it blended out really quickly and look at this granulation you see the granulation 
What a beautiful color. The robin's egg. It's so pretty. That spring green. The butter. Butter's really neat. Let's go. I'm going to take some more of the butter because it's a gouache. And just layer it a little bit just to smooth out some of the water transitions that were in there. Perfect. Look how smooth the lilac ended up. And the sky color is interesting. It actually changed a little bit. Let's see how it layers. I have to tip this around though because the camera is so close to my So sky color layers really well. Sky color is, reminds me of a version of cerulean. It glazes nicely. It's very pretty. And I think I can actually get even more. I can. I can get even more out of that. Very nice. Um, I have to tilt it because there we go. Color's beautiful. Really pretty. Okay, let's see what's the next one. Is let's reposition this and we'll do these final ones here. So strawberry is the next one you guys a nice view of strawberry strawberry is my favorite color by this company it keeps me coming back for more I don't have anything like it and I have looked through all of my watercolors I actually would have to make it I cannot get this color look at how pretty it is I feel like my first car was this color. And you know, call me crazy, but I swear I smell strawberries every time I paint with this color. Every time. I feel like it smells like strawberries. Maybe, maybe there's like a scent in it. I don't know. They do smell really good. That color is so beautiful. Just out of curiosity, I want to see if I can get this one to um, be luminous. So I'm just going to put a little bit in the corner here with a lot of water. Mm. Yeah, I love this color. It's beautiful. It even makes a great transparent pink. Love it. Beautiful. I even love the way these, um, the edges sit right away without having to go over them a million times, you know, sometimes with, um, different watercolors, you just really can't get that transparency right off the bat, you know, let's see, we're going to do this one here. And then I got to come back and do other layers. Transparent flowers are actually really fun to do. And butterflies. Transparent butterflies are fun too. Okay, so we'll let those dry. Wow. Performing well, I would say, huh? So far, everything's performing good. This is poplar yellow. This is uh, 
really the only yellow you pretty much need in this set. It's a very, very warm yellow. It's beautiful. There is, I think there is a lemon yellow too, but I feel like this one just kind of did everything I needed in a yellow. So I just, I just got this one so far. And this is, I hope I'm putting the right one on the right one. Prussian. No, this is Prussian. It goes here. going to see if Prussian lifts in just a second because I'm going to try and remove it from that other place. Oof, the Prussian is gorgeous. Oh, that's everything I want in a Prussian blue. It's actually so much more. I think that's the nicest Prussian that I have. Um... There's a Mission Gold Prussian I used to like to use all the time, but I ran out of it. And Mission Gold is not really the best quality watercolor, although it's very good, but it's really bright watercolor. This is a gorgeous Prussian, though. I like that. Okay, let's see if I can remove this. I just... Yeah, not bad. Got some strawberry in there though. Here. Let's see if I can do it without touching the other stuff. Okay. So this is almost night. This one looks very cerulean to me. I have my square really wet. It's going to be a good mixing color. For sure. It's really pretty. So let me give you a closer shot of these. So this is Prussian and almost night. Let's see if I can get, I don't want to cover the the names too much because these are just like the swatches, you know, and one more. I do not know what this is called, so I'm going to mess it up. I'm just going to tell you right now, but it's a beautiful green. I think it's Mitt Walking, Mitt Walking Boreal. But wait until you see how pretty the screen is. Okay, do I need to say anything else? It's beautiful. It's the perfect forest green. Like, it's got, I don't know, it's got qualities of hooker's green almost with chromine green oxide mixed and maybe a little bit Yeah, it's really pretty. I could not mix this green, actually. This is a green that, like, a lot of people just mix all their greens. But this is a green you need to have. I love this green. I knew I was going to like it. I saw it online, and I was like, that is a beautiful green. I'm going to really enjoy that one. And yes, I will. How pretty. So let's get more of the mass tone down here. So you can see what we're dealing with. Sorry if I leaned away from the microphone a little bit. I have the camera right in front, and so I'm kind of working around you guys. So don't mind me. But I want you to be able to see everything. How pretty is that? Let's go back to the Prussian too, because as it's drying, it um, in the area where I had a lot of water, I want to get more mass tone on the bottom here, so I can see what that looks like when it dries. You know, okay. 
and then just smooth out the line just a bit. And let's remove a little of this color so that I can read it. Oh, I just dropped my, there we go. These are a lot of fun. I like them. I like them a lot. I wonder if I can get like cherry a little bit darker now that I'm kind of getting used to these. They glaze really well. So you can go back and layer them to get even darker tones. So you don't have to really like worry about uh, streaks. They definitely layer well. PB29, this one granulated well. It's beautiful. It's got some really cool granulation. Blueberry Mountain. I'm curious what this one's going to be like if we just go a little darker. Because I definitely want in the swatch for it to show off um, some of the vibrant, deeper depths of the color. And then see if I can blend this a little bit. Yeah, because it's so vibrant. I don't want, I don't want to forget how vibrant this is by painting a pastel version of it. Well, not really pastel, but like a mid-tone version of it. I definitely want some of these beautiful deep ranges in the swatch. So when I come back and look, you know, same with Sunrise Red. Let's look and see Sunrise Red a little further. So I'm just going to take some more. Yeah, because I think I mixed too much water with it. And I feel like I diluted it. So I'm not representing the mass tone anywhere in the swatch. Much better. I can actually leave them like that. Here. Let's rinse out my brush entirely and do that. So I feel like Sunrise Red, the minute you add water to it, it gets away from the mass tone quick. It like sinks into the paper, which is kind of nice because it blends so well, you know, noticing that. Let's go with the strawberry too and add another layer to the strawberry. I kind of like this whole add a second layer thing. I'm gonna add it like that. And we'll wait to see how it dries. Let's do that. Pumpkin, let's do the same thing. And that way I can kind of test, um, you know, see how the mass tone areas dry and see how many layers these can take. Because sometimes you can layer these things and they ultimately look really streaky when you start to layer. So I think it's important to do a little layering when you're testing watercolors before I start mixing them together. Yeah, these light ones almost feel like gouache to me. Um, in a way, they have that, that it's funny because when I mix them, they have the abil ability, obviously, with water to be very transparent, but then they have also this coverage level when they're kind of sticky, you know, like when they get to the point where the water's starting to dry, but the paint's still nice and pliable and wet. Look at how much coverage they can give you. But then you can like peel them back so they're not really heavily staining. Um, what else can I do? Spring Lilac. Let's see if we can get more color 
out of that, like more coverage. Kind of, it's more like just more opaqueness and less transparency. So that was pretty much the color you're gonna get. Interesting, it's interesting to see how these dry because they're drying now while we're working on them. So this green is highly granulating. I wonder if I add some more water and put it in a palette, like on some ceramic and let it mix around exactly how much granulation I'll bet you I get a lot. That's really nice. Almost night doesn't seem to granulate at all. But I would like to put just a line of it so we can represent the darkest part and see how that dries. Let's do that. So sorry this is a very long swatching video, but I think it's worth it because I want you to see how I sometimes will layer swatches. Um, so that I can kind of get a feel and I feel like this is one of the best things you can do because it it mimics how you actually paint because we don't just make one swipe, you know, and let dry. We'll like put layers a lot of times on these paints and you need to know like how you're going to get to, you know, those mass tones and what it's going to do. Like if I were to paint this, is it going to bleed and leave a really ugly streaky watermark or is it going to blend and kind of just go evenly out? Now the, the, um, the watercolor paper I'm using is a hundred percent cotton and it is, Hanamula. I actually made this sketchbook. So it's a beautiful, beautiful paper to use. It's interesting how the gold too, the gold like um, spreads really nicely. And then you can go back and add another layer of gold. Look at that. So there's a lot you can do with these. These are really cool paints, fun paints. Okay, so let's mix a couple of colors together while these are drying. How about we do um, the cherry and the PB29? So I'm going to take that one. Oh, I just took the wrong one. Hang on. That was purple. Let's take the PB29, put it in my palette, and the cherry. such a pretty color. This would be close to like a Quinn magenta, but, but different. Um, so in the swatch, I'm going to start here with the cherry. Let's get a lot of that in there. Good. And we'll start picking up some of our, look at that beautiful purple. Wow. Oh my goodness. It's so bright and vivid. How nice is that? Oh, those are so pretty. It's really beautiful. Yeah, those are gorgeous. So, so pretty. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's nice. Okay, so let's take the cherry again and I'm gonna mix it with something else over here. Um, 
I think I'll mix it with the sky blue. Let's see how that does. I'm gonna re wet it. Trying to get a lot of it this time. Oh, what a pretty periwinkle. That's a beautiful shade. That's really pretty. See, that's why I like this. Uh, this is this is how you paint, you know. This is a much better way for me to swatch out things. And it's funny how I forgot. I was watching a video and somebody reminded me about these um, these drawings, and I was like, "Yeah, I used to do that. That's right. What a good idea! I got to go back and do that again." I'm just going to add some water to this. So I can show some of the variations. Let's just give it a little more color here so that we have some different shades going on. I want some of those bright, bright purples. This is really pretty. Um, yeah, and the sky blue mixed really well with it. So then if we go over here, well, let's go this way with PB29. We'll mix it with something else. Okay. Um, let me mix it with this green, the spring green. Oh, that's neat. It's like you get this really granulating like a really granulating May green. That's pretty. Look at that deep teal. It's pretty. Oh my gosh, it, it almost looks like, yeah, it's really pretty. Look at that. That's a gorgeous color. It's really beautiful. And add a little more of the green. And see if it kind of strikes it away a little bit. It does. That's cool. All right, we'll let that dry. That's going to be a really cool, like, granulating color. Oh, let's mix PB29 with the um, Spring Lilac. So which one should I do next? That's really pretty. What a beautiful shade. 
I want to see how granulating this gets. So let's rinse our brush out and get a lot more of the water with the PB29 involved. I got this really wet now, but it's actually very powerful. It's, um, it really takes over. It really takes over the paint. Look at that. So a lot of times to encourage granulation too, is you can just uh, clean your brush with plain water and just peel back some of the paint like so that there's not so many layers and it will granulate even more. I'm just going to tap in a little more of this color here just so we have some like smokier, darker variations. It's really pretty. Um, I'm going to mix the Prussian with the strawberry over here. So let's grab some Prussian. Okay. I'm like wasting so much paint doing it this way, but it doesn't matter. Oh, look at that rich wine color. Really pretty. Yeah, it's like this really rich, boop, really rich wine. Strawberry is, like I said, it's a really cool color. I like that. It's really beautiful. Cool. So I'm going to take this and paint it here so that we can see the color that I made. Isn't that pretty? Really pretty. Um, now let's combine the poplar yellow and the strawberry. We should get a really nice orange. I need to get some clean water. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah, it's really pretty. It's a beautiful color. I'm just going to paint it here so that I can see it a little more clearly. It's pretty makes such a bright orange. It's actually one of the prettier oranges that I've seen. It's really nice. Um, then strawberry and almost night would be interesting to look at. So let's put that here. Because this is very much like a cerulean blue to me. Look at that purple. 
Lots of nice purples. It's like a beautiful smoky purple. Going to like this really pretty blue from the cerulean. Really nice. Look at those shades. They're so pretty. Um, let's mix the blue mountain. with a little bit of the almost night That's really pretty. It kind of like really lights up that color. It's interesting. And then I'm going to add a little bit of the strawberry. Let's go ahead and Combine those for that pretty kind of purpley wine color. Brings up the pink value. And then as we come over here. Let's mix together to get that really deep shade. Almost like a, like an indigo, almost. Look at those shades. Those are beautiful. Lots of variety going on there. Those three colors like to play together really, really well. Um, hmm. Interesting what happened here. So that was, yeah, that's really interesting what happened. Let's mix the, I'm trying to see, like what else I'd like to see together. I love this one. This one looks really pretty. We didn't mix the robin's egg with anything. What's in the robin's egg? I'm trying to think of what I would mix that with. I don't know. I have to think about that one. I feel like maybe, you know what? I feel like it would be cool if we took robin's egg and created like a rainbow of blues. So I'm going to blend out my robin's egg and then get a little bit of the almost night. So you get that like really pretty Almost like a phthalo kind of mix. If you were going to put phthalo with it, maybe. I don't know. I'm trying to think. Oh, look. Yeah, that powder blue is beautiful. And then add a little bit of the um, Prussian. Mm. 
It gives it like a little more adds a little more richness to it. That's beautiful. That would make a really interesting variety, you know? Because you've got like the opaqueness. Sorry, I'm moving around. I'm still fighting with the camera here. You get the opaqueness that the robin's egg gives you. So you get it gets into those colors and it makes it really smoky. But then you take a little bit of the Prussian and the Prussian pushes it into like that kind of mysterious blue tone. But then the almost really attacks it a lot like a phthalo blue would attack a color like this. You know, it like wants to take over, but look at how pretty. That combination is really nice. Looks really good. Um, I am probably going to paint all over the back of my thing here by moving this around. Um, I want to go a little further with that. Maybe do a yellow. Let's do a little bit of this yellow with um, this green here. I'm going to put it and put it here. Just to see how far I can take that green to rewet it. Let's see if it rewets really well. Looks like it rewets. Oh yeah, it rewet really fast. Then to just blend them out on paper. So you have like the granulation, you know, of the green. Kind of reminds me of like the Shire set, right? The granulation of the greens with a little bit of that yellow. Oh, there I go again. Caught on the phone cord. Yeah, that's pretty. See, so you get like a granulating yellow almost. Um, hmm. Okay. I love these. They are so beautiful. I'm really happy with this. I could easily paint with this palette. Uh, what didn't I, I didn't mix the cherry and the yellow together. Let's go ahead and put that there. So we'll get a bunch of the yellow. Just put it there. Rinse out. Boy, do I ever need to clean my waters. And take the cherry. It's going to make a really neat orange. So I was saying about this orange, this poplar, poplar yellow, I mean, it was, it stroke, it strikes me as a yellow that can really be a very flexible yellow, even though it's super warm, but it works with these colors so well. And it will make everything from bright oranges to moody oranges, depending on what you pair with it, because it's a warm yellow. Pairing it with this um, cherry color just makes it a little more moody. But it's a really deep, beautiful orange color, you know, it's really pretty. Did I say really pretty like a zillion times in this? I think I did. Okay, so what am I missing? Did I miss anything? I feel like I pretty much got them all. We didn't mix like the sky color with the yellow, I don't think, but we did mix it with something else. And now I can't find it. I'm not really sure what it was. Oh, it was this one. We mixed it with the cherry. We could mix it with we could mix it with this yellow and just see. Let's see what happens. I mean, I probably, the sky color, I would be um, 
using this one primarily alone, you know, as a beautiful sky color, but oh, it makes a really, really nice bright green. Very pretty. Yeah, it makes a beautiful green. It's like a really bright. Pretty green. Almost a tone you would get from like a Viridian. Hmm. Super nice colors. So we mixed many of these together. I um, am looking for two more combinations and I'm thinking maybe I'll do a yellow with the gold over it because that's always really pretty to see as we'll put some yellow and maybe some butter yellow. Oh, let me grab this. What I need is clean water. Oh, there we go. This butter yellow is not having it. It's like, don't be coming up in here and touching me with anything that's not clean water. Actually, these two mix really, really pretty together. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and paint the gold right over it without waiting for these to dry just to see what happens. Isn't that interesting? So, hmm. Yeah, I think you definitely need to wait until they dry. It does what most golds do. It kind of like you ruin the flex, you know? So let's put the gold over something else. Like it over this yeah if you don't want to lose the f the flex of the gold you know the re the um, iridescence then you have to wait for it to dry but it's really pretty over these other things Actually, you kind of like get addicted. You want to paint it over everything, but I'm just going to paint it over some of the halves. That's lovely. Look how pretty that is. See how shiny it is? So as this is drying... So when you don't let it dry, it kind of does something different. <laughs> Definitely want to wait till everything dries. It's very pretty gold. Yeah, like it's just so iridescent, really, no matter what you paint it over. As long as it's dry, it adds that beautiful sheen. Okay, I'm going to let you go now because I've done enough. I've done a lot of combinations and I will keep going. <laughs> I'll keep playing until I fill this whole thing up. But at this point, I think you've seen the colors. We got a, like, a nice um, view of even some start of some transparent flowers that I can finish up with and see how those go. But yeah, I like it. So overall, the colors dry almost identical to when they laid down there are some that dried a lot lighter like um the cherry dries a lot lighter and you almost have to just keep layering it however it does layer really well but it does sink into the paper and kind of uh, want to lighten up significantly but it makes some beautiful beautiful purples uh this Prussian blue layers really well and it's it does not dry um one thing about Prussian is 
it can dry matte like a matte shade which is a little annoying to me i don't like it when the blues dry and look matte you know what i mean like powdery but this one doesn't it stays really bright and i like that it's beautiful i also like the fact that almost night stays bright and the purple stay bright they are not notice that they are not um dusty and that makes a huge difference to me also this yellow is beautiful so poplar yellow is such a great color to have in your palette you can see all the different things it does and how many beautiful shades it can manufacture even here can you imagine having this in like a painted sunset would be really pretty that would actually be very beautiful with a little bit of PB29, right? The ultramarine. This would even make beautiful sky, like cherry to the um, sky blue combination was really beautiful. And this would be really pretty, the robin's egg to the sky blue. And, you know, adding a little bit of Prussian would be pretty. So there's a lot of really great things. You can see how brilliant the colors dried. Pumpkin's really bright orange. Spring green looks lovely. Butter is a beautiful yellow. I'm really happy with these. And we even got some like depth of color out of the sunrise red. I'm not sure I would keep that, that like that name. I don't see that as being a sunrise color. I see it more as being kind of like a Christmassy red, you know, like, or a wine color. So maybe like a rouge wine, you know, it kind of has that burgundy kind of look to it, right? Not just my opinion. Okay. Well, guys, let me know what you think of Beam. I think they are just lovely and they were really enjoyable to paint with. And I love trying out new watercolors. I'll catch you guys again later. Happy painting.